Is Sabine Wren a force sensitive? After the most recent Ahsoka trailer, supporting details and emphasis on Sabine may very well be pointing us in the direction that Sabine is a force sensitive. Maybe. Actually, yeah, probably. But there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. Especially for those viewers who are already commenting right now, even though they haven't seen anything of this video. So I'm just gonna lead off with like the best evidence that I have that Sabine is a force sensitive. And in fact, she might already be one. Sabine trains with the Darksaber. And yes, while the Darksaber itself is important, but the idea here is exactly what Kanan says while she's struggling to train with the Darksaber. Maybe because she doesn't have the Force, you don't believe she can do this? No. The Force resides in all living things, but you have to be open to it. Sabine is blocked. Her mind is conflicted. Kanan's answer is the key. He says, no, Sabine is blocked. Her mind is closed and conflicted because she was indirectly responsible for thousands of her own people dying. And of course, we know that she has family issues and those family issues are not resolved until the end of Star Wars Rebels. So you could easily say that Sabine is probably at the right mental state after Star Wars Rebels, but very clearly we're seeing her still struggling with some type of mental issue with the Ahsoka trailers. And this is probably a great segue to go into my second reason. Attributes of a Force Wielder. The attributes of a Force Wielder are often overlooked, and we have so many variants of attributes of what Force Sensitive look like or the characteristics that go into a Force Sensitive. There are things like piloting starships or piloting pod racers, uh, the openness of the galaxy and your own spirituality. Characters like Maz Kanata from The Force Awakens, and a character like Chirrut Inua from Rogue One. But there is one characteristic that is often overlooked, and that is expression. Yes, the process of making known one's thoughts or feelings. Sabine Wren is probably the greatest visual expressor and storyteller in all of Star Wars. And when I talk about expression, I mean her incredible and very unique talent of art. Her graffiti, fam. Art is not something everyone can do, let alone everyone do it just as good as her. And Sabine opens up to her surroundings, her sufferings, and her experiences. Ultimately expresses everything that she went through, through her graffiti. And this is also a direct connection to what Kanan says when she's training with the Darksaber. She's so expressive and yet so tightly wound. She's so... Mandalorian. Ugh, very. She's cutting herself off like Luke from The Last Jedi. I feel like expression is one of the most undervalued characteristics of a Jedi because it's just so infrequent, maybe even scarce. And that's exactly what Force Sensitivity is. It is uncommon, very uncommon. It's very rare for someone to be Force Sensitive, although the Force resides in all living things. And I'd like to give you two more examples of how expression is used by a Force Sensitive. Avar Chris is one of the most prime examples of expressions, and this is one of the coolest Jedi in the High Republic, who literally sees and describes the Force as a song, as music. I think this is by far the best example of how one can interpret the Force. I mean, music itself, like Avar Chris sees the Force, that is an art, that is an interpretation of feeling and expression. I think this is probably the most similar to what Sabine would probably interpret or describe the Force as. I mean, her art, her graffiti, song and music, they are essentially pieces of art, and I think Sabine could absolutely understand where Avar Chris is coming from when she senses the Force. And there are way more simpler forms of expression, just like we see Ezra Bridger and Cal Kestis, kind of like little hoarders or even collectors in the galaxy going around collecting little trinkets for their lightsabers or even helmets of stormtroopers. I think that's something that is very overlooked. And of course, when you think about how complicated characters are in their force sensitivity, I mean, Ezra Bridger is a great example of how long it took him to be a little bit more open of the force. He didn't really even understand what he was doing, and it took someone like Kanan, who kind of understood where he was coming from, to finally get him on the pathway to becoming a Jedi. 
And age is also a very unique concept when it comes to Force sensibility because there are so many characters that either are open, naturally open to the Force just like Ahsoka was that we've seen in Tales of the Jedi, or even someone from the Legends continuity like Bane, where half of his life had already been lived and he kind of understood that there was something deep inside him that beckoned for more power that was the Force, but it was only late until his 30s, maybe even early 40s, where he actually understood and acknowledged what the Force was and finally was able to learn and had teachers. The Force works when it deems it's ready. It does not come at a want, it comes at a need, and anybody can be Force sensitive. But with that, I want to close with one final thing, and this detail is actually what inspired me to make this video is because the newest Ahsoka trailer dropped one of the craziest details that I think we've seen for this theory, and that is Ahsoka's feelings. Ahsoka's feelings are by far one of the most important details we should account for. We know Ahsoka, she's been through so much, and she's arguably the greatest representation of Star Wars because she's been through every era, almost every era. She's been through the prequel trilogy, she has seen what the Jedi have done, and of course, the tragedy and fall of Anakin Skywalker. She's been through the dark times with the Empire in the original trilogy, and of course, that's what we see in Star Wars Rebels but also the fight between Darth Vader and discovering the identity of who Darth Vader is. And finally, and most importantly, The Mandalorian, which showed exactly why she rejects the idea of training Grogu. Ahsoka doesn't just do things, fam. No, she's incredibly smart, incredibly experienced, and has so much wisdom and probably has the most understanding about the Force in this timeline, even more so than Luke, I would say. And that's because she's the former apprentice of Anakin Skywalker. This makes her understand so much more than everyone else in the Star Wars galaxy. I mean, not even primetime Luke could really understand what his father was and of course the teachings that his father had to give him, only really Ahsoka gets that. But the trailer, the trailer shows us this. I bet your master found you difficult at times. Anakin never got to finish my training. I walked away from him, just like I walked away from Sabine. You never made things easy for me, master. Sabine calls Ahsoka master. Master is not a terminology that is thrown around very lightly. No, there is a very heavy weight to master and labeling yourself as a teacher, especially a Jedi, and a Jedi that has the caliber of Ahsoka Tano. And the biggest and most prime example is when Ahsoka walks away from teaching Sabine. Anakin never got to finish my training. I walked away from him, just like I walked away from Sabine. Ahsoka has seen what a fully trained Jedi Knight who falls to the dark side can do to the galaxy. It's calamity. And she tells us exactly this in The Mandalorian. He's formed a strong attachment to you. I cannot train him. His attachment to you makes him vulnerable to his fears. I've seen what such feelings can do to a fully trained Jedi Knight. To the best of us, I will not start this child down that path. Better to let his abilities fade. It is so very easy for Ahsoka to walk away from training Sabine and let her Force abilities just fade away. But to even make this decision, Ahsoka needed to detect some inkling, a minute sense of Force abilities in Sabine Wren. I think just by watching the trailer, you can easily understand that maybe, potentially, Sabine is a Force sensitive. Ahsoka. Ahsoka probably understood that she was force sensitive, but also declared that she had a major attachment issue. And that attachment issue is Ezra Bridger. Because we all know that Ezra was counting on Sabine to find her. He says that in Star Wars Rebels. And I think perhaps Sabine hasn't found Ezra yet, and that's probably shaking her confidence. Maybe even leading her down a dark path of depression and mental illness. And in the very few shots that we have, you can even see Sabine growing her hair very long, and that's not what we're used to because we, we see her with the short hair later. But perhaps this is a wavering of her confidence. Perhaps she is uncertain of her abilities, and maybe she's questioning herself, and Ahsoka walking out on her is probably maybe even making her feel like a failure. Not finding Ezra is clearly hurting her. And I think Ahsoka can very easily sense the turmoil that's inside of her. 
And while this isn't a shot at Sabine at all, because I'm pretty sure she hasn't had a single ugly day in her life, but it was very clearly that she is not herself. And I think that Ahsoka, someone that understands what the failure of teaching a Jedi can do, I think she makes this decision because she knows Sabine can probably make a Jedi with her training. And if she can make a Jedi, well then she can very easily fall to the dark side and cause something terrible to happen because of her emotions, because of her attachments, but Ahsoka only makes this decision because she believes that Sabine is force sensitive. Ahsoka does not in any way, shape or form want to create another Anakin Skywalker. I think we have so much more evidence out there, but the trailer brings up so much incredible details and I just had to make this video because, yeah, I'm starting to think Sabine Wren is a force sensitive and hopefully at the end of the Ahsoka series, we have a brand new Mandalorian Jedi in the universe. Well fam, that was a doozy, that was fun, I hope you all enjoyed and if you made it this far, y'all are freaking incredible, okay, watching my little tiny channel, so please go ahead and subscribe, become an apprentice and acolyte, and I can't wait to talk more Star Wars and react, baby, because it's so damn fun. I'll see you around, alright? Deuces!